regular 20 feet by 40 feet long greenhouse. I always thought you were gentle, but not that morning, the day you died. You gave it all you got when trying to hold up the snow, but in the end, you still got crushed. Damn! I shall never forget your last roar. Snow turned into rain overnight. Your new fluffy white coat also turned, but into a sponge and sucked up all the rainwater until you could no longer stand the weight of it anymore. At least a few tons. By noon, your caved-in roof became a bowl, collecting more H2O. I had to slice you up even more to protect my boat. It feels strange to stab you in the gut, but it was needed to let the water flow. I feel like I was putting you down for good, so you can go to greenhouse heaven. I never knew how strong you were until you were gone. I felt your strength in your remains. There was dignity in the way you died. Your ribs bend and twist while trying to hold up gravity and protect what lies below. You die honorably, like a warrior. But perhaps it was inevitable as you were made for another time, when the weather was not as extreme and the phrase climate change did not exist. I see no other way of taking you down apart from cutting you into pieces. As each rib fell, my heart sank a little. I know nothing lasts forever. I know what goes up must come down. But knowing is one thing, experience the feeling of it is another. I try to calm myself by concentrating on the doing. Helped by the sound of sawing and metal falling, I kept moving. You were so good at drying wood, like a low temperature oven. The sound of dry wood hitting each other is soothing, like being in a temple. to take you down. By now, I'm thinking what I should do with all your body parts. But it turned out you continue to live on six acres. Your poly cover is not under my concrete slab, keeping it dry from ground moisture. and your special poly mounting hardware became an upgrade for my small greenhouse. The lumber from these wooden sidewalls was also saved. In the end, not much went to the landfill, which comforts me.
My back home made the process as smooth as possible, mentally and physically. We both built you from the ground up and took you back to the ground level. We grieved together, me and my Kubota. While breaking down each component, I unscrew each screw I installed just two years ago. I organize them into piles by the materials. To some, your twisted body is just a pile of scrap metal now. But to me, it is oddly inspiring and beautiful. These organic shapes are something the most advanced metal bending machine cannot replicate. I look forward to the day when I will be ready to turn them into something special to me. I feel I have neglected you. And you could have a much longer life if I had been more diligent. I could have added more bracing and support and woke up earlier that morning. I'm sorry. Dear Six Acres, I had no idea you had all these feelings about me. Since it is still a bit upsetting for you to speak, how about I tell you my story? I was just a greenhouse, a slave for my master, and my only purpose is to help him make more money. I was skeptical when you became my new master. But you always treated me with respect. You took good care of me. Like you said, I was built for another time when the weather is less extreme. It was my time to go. I witnessed the whole process of how you prepare a new spot for me to be my new home. I can't believe you and your little tractor regretted this hill level, yet with a gentle curve for water drainage. I was glad you did not find any big rock in your way that might be too big to move. And you bought all this nice gravel to make the floor nice and clean. And you packed the ground so well multiple times to ensure it was level. You don't cut corners when you work. You had all the tools you needed to make this job very professional. You even got a laser that you used multiple times. I remember thinking, how will this guy make a living in this world? He will not make any money by doing everything with such care. It is like he's building a church, a temple, and not for profit. I felt like a VIP when you laid down a new carpet just before my arrival. You fixed it to the ground with some long nails and washers. After that, you marked out where precisely you want me to live and ensured the footprint was square by checking the diagonal distance. You made some markings on the ground where each of my arches will be anchored. The ground was too hard to hammer my footings in with a sledgehammer. Then you brought out this hammer drill that looked too big for you to handle. But you had a fan cheering you on.
you switch the drill bit to a compactor and pack down my feet even more. Next, you put a piece of masking tape on the ends and again, use your laser to finalize the level. At this point, I knew I would be standing up straight and square in my new home. You are methodical and organized when you work. That is why you get things done fast and without frustrations. I was glad to see you with a helper, as you often work alone. But my arches were too big and awkward for one person to handle. After all the ribs were up, I saw the excitement and joy you both had on your face, and I will never forget that. I stood proud, like a cathedral. I can see you are relieved by now, as my main shape is defined, and all you have to do is tie it all together. You seem treasure the things around you, as I often see you reuse old parts that you recycle from other projects. Since you wanted to use me more as a cover space than as a greenhouse, and leave both ends open, I was glad you added this extra wooden support at both ends to stiffen my bones. But they also provided a place to fasten the poly cover later on. You have such an excellent wood shop. I can tell you custom build it yourself and love working there. It has all your toys, good lighting, and a flat floor. I realized how good these wood pieces looked when you installed them. It has your flavor. It's almost time to put on my transparent skin. But before that, you ensure I stood perfectly straight and braced all my corners. You even added rebars at an angle to boost the tie down force so I don't get blown away. You made sure there were no missing or loose nuts and bolts. I remember you were murmuring, whoever invented this hardware, this system, is a genius. Because there's zero damage when mounting the plastic in this C channel using these special springs. <laughs> oh yeah! It's your first time doing this, but you can solve each problem and develop a simple solution. Like this simple poly roller dispenser jig. You made with your tractor forks, some wood, conduit pipe, and some clamps. I like it. It works so well, in fact, almost too well. Too much force will make it unroll too fast. From that moment on, it seemed easy for you. You just had to secure the plastic before the wind took it away. You were passionate about putting me together, as I often saw you work late into the evenings until you couldn't see anymore. I guess you realize this clear poly lets in too much sun making it too hot, so you added a white tarp as a shade cloth. The truth is, you gave me a second life. You treated me with respect. I felt my words beyond an ordinary greenhouse, as I am extraordinary. Nobody has ever taken this many photos and videos of me. I feel like a celebrity, and now I'm on YouTube, where the whole world can hear my story. None of this will happen without you. Although the time we spent together was short, only two years, it was full of good memories and quality times. 
So please don't feel bad because it was all worth it for me. And I'm honored to have been your greenhouse. It's not like you did not watch out for me. You did it multiple times. Just look at all the footages you shot. In the end, I'm old, rusted, and outdated. Newer generations of greenhouses have designs to handle much heavier snow load than I do. But hey, remember, I'm 20 feet wide by 100 feet long, and you only use 40 feet, so you still have at least 50 feet left, plus both ends and the door that you have never installed. So I'm not entirely dead yet. 